the last input you can you can assess with Tefra probe is um, is the eruptive history using the global volcanism website. So the GVP database you probably know it. It's part of the Smithsonian Institution and it's a really amazing effort to compile all the eruptions. Now this is is designed as following the ID that a rough hazard assessment where you don't have loads of data is better than nothing at all. But there are major ass assumptions with, with such databases, okay? So you should really more see that the use of this database as a way to complete the field data and the field observation rather than providing you the eruptive history you know, on a silver plate. Also, there are some 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 issues uh, in the definition of what is an eruption. We 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 realize more and more, and for example, um, eruptions that we see as short lasting lasting eruptions in the geological record might has might have been long lasting eruption, like the two thousand one eruption of Cordon Cauge or the 2010 eruption of Ayafiatla Yucatul and we realized that these are some aspects that we didn't consider before. So please use that with care, use that knowing the assumptions that are behind these databases. And I think that the, the Puchewe Cordon Cauge is a good example because we have in fact several systems here, okay? We have, if we go we see that we have the central crater here, but the 2011 eruption was somewhere there, okay? So what you're gonna get from this database is a generic, a generic eruptive history for the system, but you might have to distinguish between one or and the other, okay? So there's one thing that we want to identify from this website is the volcano number, okay, this. So you can copy it, for example, and then we can go to Tefaprob inputs GVP, and we get this. So here is where you're gonna paste your uh, the the volcano number, and you're gonna click access. Okay. Then you wait for a few seconds, and once the data has been accessed, you this table here is filled. So let's click the plot button and that shows you the plot what the er eruptive history in a histogram form okay so it just gives you the occurrence of uh, eruptions of different VIs through Holocene with the U being um, unidentified and O other you can in this table plot uh, for example just VI 3 and 5, okay, undefined or whatever. Let's go back to all. You can plot only those that are confirmed or unconfirmed, okay, so then we don't have any. So plot all, and then you can just show those, for example, with historical evidences, the chronological evidence, so on and so forth, okay. The second way you can plot the data is plot them as cumulative shape, okay? And so here you see the number of eruption through time. There are a few papers you can refer to that are mentioned in the user manual and the companion paper of uh, the Tefra probe uh, package about the use of such data. Here what you see typically is you have a very low segment that is flat, then you have a segment that is intermediate and you have a segment that is very steep in more recent. Here, usually it's gonna represent um, the, the record that is historically complete. Here, we're gonna have the geologically complete record where we might lose the finer eruptions and then further back in time, you get only the large eruptions. So go read about that I, I i'm not going to describe that just right now 
Um, so now let's say that we deem that our JDGK record is complete around here, okay? So there is this data that is the time limit function, okay? And this can be used to constrain your subset. So for example, I say that my eruptive history is complete from, I don't know, 1800, okay? Try that, I plot it, and I get this type of data, okay? So if I say that um, this is my complete records, if I do some assumptions, again, there are loads of assumptions behind that, but if we assume that these eruptions are independent from each other, okay, so so the, the, the timing of the next eruption doesn't depend on the timing of the previous eruption, big assumption, we can treat that as a Poisson process. Again, read about it and you, s you need to assess the assumptions, well, the, the extent of the assumptions behind that. But anyway, if we deem that this is our complete record, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten eruptions in a bit more than 200 years. Okay, so you can divide and gives you um, an average uh, eruption rate per year. Okay, and then again, the user manual, it's all specified if you assume that this is a Poissonian process, you can just click on the probability button here, and this is going to tell you the probability of having an eruption in a given time. Okay, so we want to assess the probability of an eruption in time interval greater than this time t here, okay? So let's go back to the cumulative plots and we can, so this, this is a critical, uh, this is a critical boundary to define when your record is complete. And note that uh, it might not be at the same position for different VIs, okay? So for large VIs, it might be further back in time. So we, with Customs Eye, we have a paper, Bias and Bonadonna 2013 on Cotopaxi Volcano in Natural Hazard, we discuss uh, some of these aspects, go, so go check that out. And I won't uh, spend that much more time on this because this is really a side database that's going to help you complete your field data and not um, just give you the eruption history in, in that way. But still, if you know the, the extent of the, um, the assumptions, you can use that to get a more robust um, data set. Um, here, this export data button helps you to export all the data that you see that was uh, obtained from the GDP database. Export figure, you can export the figures that you want to then uh, use them in publications.